to In the House podcast. Hey, Tony, how's it going? Hey, Jenny, great. How are you doing today? I'm very good. How was your good. Halloween? Oh, it was actually really fun. Okay. We didn't do too much. We stayed home and did a scavenger hunt, but it was lovely, very relaxing. A lot different from last year, obviously. Yes, we went trick or treating last year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how was the scavenger hunt? It was fun. We we gave my son a bunch of riddles, so he had to find <laughs> things around the house, and we didn't give him too too much candy. So mm -hmm. I, I had gotten some little books and things to hide that are educational. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully he had a That's good time. That's kind of like a non fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I he he can't tell the difference. They were truck books. There okay. were truck books and yeah. he loves trucks, but yeah. it's uh, learning how to read with truck books. <laughs> I figured we Always may as well make it. Make it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Did you get up to anything special? I just had dinner with a friend and kind of crashed a little bit early because That's it nice. was a long day for me. Yeah. And Chai is always afraid of fireworks. So I, oh, yeah, I that's right. I usually stay home with her. I'm not actually a big Halloween fan anyway. I'm not either. Because I've nev never dressed up in my entire life. You've never? Never dressed up. Yeah. Next year? No. No, I don't know. I'm just not. <laughs> I celebrate every day. I don't need to just celebrate Halloween. I love that. I yeah. celebrate every day. It's true. I, I like Christmas, actually. I'm more partial to Christmas, not for the commercialism, mm -hmm. but I just love the decorations and I like being cozy inside when it's really cold and, you know, not too much snow mm -hmm. outside, but a little bit of snow is nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're back filming. We are. And today's episode is about stigmatized properties. So uh, yeah, it is fun. It can be really fun. <laughs> so um, today, everyone, we thought we would film an episode for you on stigmatized properties in real estate. And um, this is an interesting topic because a stigmatized property is really difficult to define. There's no one definition that will work um, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's not as simple as, you know, something like a material latent defect where it it's unfit for habitation or it would cause, a, it's, Vis it's, it's something that's well. visible. Mm -hmm. Th that's right. Um, that can be determined. A stigmatized property has to do with something psychological. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's really about something, uh, a home that's psychologically impacted or where there's a circumstance that has occurred either in the home or near it okay. that can affect the, either the appearance or the function of that property. So some of the examples would be a sexual offender yeah. re being reported living in the neighborhood. Yeah, it doesn't even okay. have to be obviously in the house because mm -hmm. you would be occupying the home, but mm -hmm. in the neighborhood or a former resident of your house or you know even a neighbor they could have been um, Im involved in something like organized crime mm -hmm. so that actually counts as a stigmatized property if you're purchasing okay. something like that something that's a little bit more forward is a death that's occurred in the property yes that's correct mm -hmm. and then um, even things like you know if someone's robbed or vandalized the home previously mm -hmm. for some people that's definitely a non-starter for some they wouldn't purchase a home like that would Squatting and like people, yeah, people who are squatting in the home consider stigmatized? You know what? I, I don't know because like I said, there's no one definition mm -hmm. for a property. And I, I would presume that if there were squatters in a, in a home, you wouldn't necessarily know what was happening in that home. So it could, right. for some people, That's constitute a stigmatized property. Yeah. And the most important <laughs> one, which comes up often, is <laughs> if whether or not a property is haunted. That's right. Do you actually Have believe you, in ghosts? You know, I, I, I don't. Do you uh, believe in spirits? So that's what I was gonna say, but I think spirits could, be, I never did before mm -hmm. until um, I had a, an interesting scenario happen. Have you ever been in the presence of someone when they passed away? No. Okay, so I have. But until that moment, I did not believe in anything like that. So I guess it's not too far off. If, if, if a spirit could be a thing, which is a different, you know, conversation, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, it could be possible that something could be haunted. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I've not encountered that myself. Have you Have you sold something, mm -hmm. uh, a home that's been haunted or where it's believed to be haunted? Never, no, never haunted. Okay. But there has been uh, death yes. and suicide. Oh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we were gonna get there anyhow, but let me ask the question since we're on the topic. You were the listing realtor? For I No, I was representing the buyer. Okay, so tell me more about that. How, okay. how did that scenario unfold? Was 
when you brought your buyer to the home, did they disclose it to you readily that there was a suicide in the property or did you guys come across that information after? Yes, good question. Because uh, the listing agent was never present during the showings. Oh, okay. Really? So it was uh, one of those properties where you just go into the lockbox <laughs> and you're yeah. basically <laughs> on your own at free will roaming through the yeah, property. Yeah, here you go. Here are the keys. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it's okay. I mean, we got um, the sense that it, you know it's vacant and nobody was living in there. Didn't feel like there was any spirits or any ghosts or okay. any haunting in the home. Mm -hmm. um, we put an offer in. It removed subjects. They moved in. Oh shoot! So it was after it was after. firm. Oh man. So. <laughs> Afterwards, the neighbors on the same floor uh -huh. decided to divulge in this information yes. that someone was, um, uh, sorry, someone committed suicide. So how did your client react to that news? Were they, did they feel uncomfortable then I inside of the property or were they upset that they had purchased something where there was a suicide previously in the home? They're, they're obviously upset. Yes. Um, I don't think there was any uh, malicious like intentions on on my end to hide anything just because of I course. didn't know. Of and course. also the listing agent, perhaps they didn't know either. Yeah. But, but one thing is if it bothered my buyer, um, if it was something that was important to them or maybe a superstition, mm -hmm. then they would have had brought it up to me. But That's right. in that case, I mean, these type of conversations typically don't really come up. You know what I mean? You ask, how many bedrooms do you want? What what location do you want? What neighborhood do you want to move mm -hmm. in? How many cats and dogs are you going to have? <laughs> but do you typically ask your buyers, are you okay if someone was murdered or, or I don't, a ghost? You know what? It's a great question. I don't typically ask that question outright. However, I do make it a point to get to know our clients. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I wouldn't even know 100% for sure. Um, but I would imagine that because there's that effort to get to know the client, something might come up in the conversation where, like, so for example, um, if I had a client that was super superstitious, mm -hmm. I would assume that that could be an issue for them and it might be a conversation. It might be something that would warrant a further discussion. Mm -hmm. But no, to answer your question, I don't flat out ask those questions when I'm working with somebody mm -hmm. because, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a subjective thing mm -hmm. and actually I have a list here I was going to ask you okay um, so these are all examples of stigmatized properties and I the reason the list is here is because I was going to ask Jenny if she would purchase any of these homes and then I'll say whether or not I would and it might uh, it might give the audience um, a hint as to how difficult it can be when you're getting when you're either listing or selling as a buyer's agent a stigmatized property because again it's so ambiguous would you buy <laughs> okay. um, a home where you found that there was a death inside of the home, either violent death or by suicide, which was the first one that we talked about? No. You would not? Okay, I have to say for myself, if I knew that beforehand, I probably would not either. What if, what if it was a significant drop in price relative to what the market value is? This is a good question. You're putting me on the spot. Um, this is gonna sound bad, probably, but I'm gonna answer honestly. If it was a, a significant drop in value, I, I might. I think I would too. But, but I, I don't know if I would live in it. I, it would be for a rental. Yeah, I think so. And I'm not saying that. <laughs> I know that, that sounds other dreadful, person's but values is not as important. But but I'm looking at from just an investment. I, that's point why of view. I that's what I mean. So from yeah. from an investment standpoint, it wouldn't make a difference for me. But would I move my family into the home? Probably not. Would I disclose it then to tenants that there was a suicide in the property? I actually probably would. Hmm. I, I probably would just mm -hmm. because I think that that would be on my conscience. But it's not a requirement to do so. Right. Um, okay. Second one. What if um, you are purchasing a home and somebody's elderly grandmother? passed away in the home peacefully. I can 100%, 200% say no, I would not move forward with the purchase you wouldn't. because I actually uh, was confronted with that situation. You were. So, so what, tell in, me, walk me through it. Back in 2004, mm -hmm. so very first house purchase, uh, it was on somewhere on Napier, Francis in North <laughs> Burnaby. Yeah, yeah. And it was a Vancouver special. Uh, owned by Italians, like original owners. Mm -hmm. And I put an offer in and I just had this intuition, like this this feeling that something happened in the home. So you had a 
an actual feeling, but there was nothing no, to... It, no, it had nothing to do with the home being haunted or there was like, I saw something. It was more just, it was vacant mm -hmm. and and it was, I don't know if it was, I don't remember if it was an estate sale. Oh, okay. but Because that could, that could give a hint that maybe somebody had passed away in the home. I, I believe that listing agent had told me the reason oh, okay. why they're selling is because both parents have passed away but you so, didn't know it was in the home right at the time. I didn't know. okay so I we kept pursuing and asking the agent did someone pass away in the home and I don't remember if he like refused to answer <laughs> or he didn't give us a straight-up answer we went forward with the inspection mm -hmm. and for some odd like encounter we ended up meeting the parents daughter Okay. okay. The, the owner's oh. daughter, which then I asked that straight question, and straight up question, did your parents pass away in the home? Mm -hmm. And even though we already spent the $500 on the inspection, uh, she said, yes, my parent, my mom passed away in the master bedroom right away. Didn't remove something. Really? Yes. Okay. So for me, that would not bother me at all. Okay. I, I, and this is why this topic is such a difficult one because it's very subjective. It's very, it's ambiguous in many ways, right? That would not bother me if, if it was a family home for many years and it was an elderly woman that I would hope have, would have had a great life. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't bother me and I would move my family in. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so see, we differ there. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. It was also my first or second purchase and i want to remember and say that maybe my mom had a like my mom uh, and grandmother had a, mm -hmm. had a say in okay. the type of home I would be buying or mm -hmm. maybe just when growing up like I I saw my grandmother um, like burning incense like, incense or money okay. what does that do I, I don't know I don't know like I think like steers ghost away okay from the property or or like you know kind of spreading sage around the home, kind of okay. cleaning the home. I see, like uh, so, smudging or whatever they call it, smudging yeah, the home. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I, w I'm not a superstitious person, but I think because I saw sure. my grandmother and my mom um, have a place and importance on like the number eight and the number three and doors not facing front, like patio doors not facing front doors, I just grew up with those feng shui elements. Well, this is a common thing though for, I don't know if you've noticed the same thing, but for some of our purchasers who are of Asian descent, I know that any person passing away in a home would bother them. Mm -hmm. And so whenever, um, you know, there's certain flags as well. If it was an estate sale right away, you're gonna ask, did the person pass away in the home? If mm -hmm. that, you know, and mm -hmm. then you would let the client know and they can make decisions from there. But that's actually very common given your um, traditional background. Mm -hmm. And I'm Asian too, but I grew up in Canada. I, I, my family is not very superstitious at all. Mm -hmm. So that could be why I'd be okay with moving into a home like that. <laughs> Do you find when you're working with clients and you're showing uh, condos that are facing cemeteries, it's an issue for most of your clients? Um, I'd say about half. So and is there a certain age group where ethnicity well and this is an interesting point as well i noticed that in terms of ethnicity if they are of chinese like chinese origin and even if they're they're in the demographic around you know between 20 to 40 they are still heavily influenced by, and they might not believe in spirits but they're heavily influenced mm -hmm. by their upbringing in terms of what their parents believed and with their grandparents mm -hmm. which is true of any any person really right mm -hmm. so for the younger generation um, they still might have a problem with it mm -hmm. because of how they were influenced while they were growing up mm -hmm. but yeah I would say 50 50 mm -hmm. and so whenever we're showing a property that's facing a cemetery I'll just let the client know mm -hmm. because I don't know if it's going to be an issue for them mm -hmm. like before the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is booked. yeah like, okay. will something like that bother you and they right. might say no but when they're there they might feel differently and that's okay right. too right. Um, how about okay this is an interesting one what happens if there was a crib death of a newborn I'm guessing for you that would still be a problem Probably no yeah yeah how about you that bothers me though because I just had a newborn I don't know if it would have bothered me before, but right mm -hmm. now it does uh, tug at some strings, so I would have to say maybe no. Mm -hmm. um, I also have on this list, would you be concerned if someone had been killed by a car on the same street as you right in front of the house? Because it's not in the actual house, it happened outside. 
I guess I'd have to ask more questions. Okay. The person who died in the vehicle, did they live in that house that I'm talking about? Oh, by? interesting. Or are they just like a bypasser and driving on the street? Are you thinking because they'd have unfinished business? I'm just they curious. Could be, they could be entering this, the, the uh -huh. house. Uh huh. You know, oh, yeah, that's Back true. to their home, home base. Mm hmm. If it was, if they weren't related to the house, mm -hmm. then I think I would be okay with it. In okay. fact, who, how would we even find that information out anyway? You ask the neighbors, they know everything. The, yeah, the neighbors are nosy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that makes sense. I, I, um, that's a good point. Would it bother me? I still think I'd be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Um, so I only have one more and I'm, I'm curious as, if this would make a difference for you. So it does mm -hmm. have to do with a death, unfortunately. Sorry to be so morbid, everyone, but <laughs> it's part of the topic for today for stigmatized properties. So if you're the purchaser, would it bother you if say 30, 40, 50 years ago, there was a death in the home from, and it might've been peaceful, whatever, it doesn't matter. It could've mm -hmm. been a peaceful death, mm -hmm. but it was 30 or 50 years ago. Would that bother you? Would you still not buy it if you knew? I don't think I would, I would probably buy it, but I don't think I would live in it. Okay. I feel like... Interesting. You know, so you're really like firm on the thing. I'm all about thing. energy. Okay. Flow of energy. I'm all about um, life renewal. Um, and I, I feel like if there's another being or spirit or whatever it is, energy flow, mm -hmm taking up that space mm -hmm. it may affect me I see mentally yeah fair enough yeah okay well I learned something new about you today <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful how about you on the last no it wouldn't bother me I know it wouldn't bother me I think because like you said you didn't grow up and, but this is why yeah. yeah it's 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 what how did you grow up what kinds of beliefs were you exposed to yeah um, so you can see even with the two of us there's quite a range in terms of what we would and would not be comfortable with mm -hmm. in terms of a stigmatized property. Mm -hmm. And then it creates another, um, I guess, it creates another basket of worms potentially for licensees. So I have some notes here as mm -hmm. well, because actually uh, in some of the stories that you had said, there are certain rules and regulations, I should say, when you're selling a stigmatized property, mm -hmm. whether you're the listing realtor versus the buyer's agent. Okay, um, so I guess something that consumers may or may not be aware of is that for stigmatized properties, the listing realtor actually does not need to readily disclose the fact that it's a stigmatized property. This is very different than a material latent defect where uh, it could be, for example, a marijuana grow up was in a property mm -hmm. and maybe potentially there was mold somewhere. So that's a different thing. And where would they find the material latent defect information? So that's provided by the listing agent. Yeah. So. Um, whenever there's a known material latent defect in a property, the listing realtor would have to disclose that to any interested parties prior to bringing an offer, offer together, right? Mm -hmm. There's and a material latent defect document. There is. It's in the yeah. PDS as well, property disclosure statement as well. Yeah. And then there's uh, it, the definition and everything's there. So examples of material latent defects are things like asbestos. You can't, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. there. And people live in homes that have asbestos where it's undisturbed. But mm -hmm. if you're going to do a reno, it will make a difference because you're disturbing that that substance. Mm -hmm. uh, radon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's uh, new. Yes, it is new. It is, but it has a whole section. It's so long. Have you taken the course yet? I'm going to because I I'm not uh, as well versed in radon. I understand what it is. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't call <laughs> a couple of inspectors and they couldn't even answer that. So I feel like they just introduced this they introduced it but didn't say but didn't specifically really why on on why it's included now yeah so I'm guessing that the reason why it was included was there was a lawsuit for something to do with radon and then the council had said something like shoot we better put these on the PDS forms <laughs> let's have a whole happens. section <laughs> but they neglected to tell us yet why <laughs> It is there and how we can protect our clients and ourselves. Right. So it's the truth. So take that course. <laughs> I'm going to basically. take the course basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, sorry. So there's a differentiation there, but for consumers, if you are somebody that where it would be a complete deal breaker for you to purchase a property mm -hmm. where um, there was a known gang member, it could have been a sexual offender either in your home or in the neighborhood or a death in the property, whether or not it was violent, peaceful X, X amount of years ago. It's not a requirement for the listing realtor to disclose this. Right. Okay. Now, 
you said something that when you were purchasing or put the offer in on your first property in 2004, right? Mm -hmm. You said that you specifically asked the listing realtor um, if they're... If the parents passed away in the That's home. right. Now, the rule actually is that for listing realtors, if you are asked by the buyer's agent if something specifically happened in the home, it is your duty to answer honestly and truthfully. To disclose you can't if you know just, the information. That's right, if you know the information. And sometimes we don't mm -hmm. know that information mm -hmm. because the sellers might not tell us. But if you do know and they, write, they flat out ask you, you do have to respond. Okay, so what if the seller says, I'm giving you this information, but mm -hmm. I don't want you to disclose it to anybody? including the buyers. So it will only come, if it's a stigmatized property and it falls within what we're talking about here, um, it's not an issue until somebody specifically asks. If somebody specifically asks, you still are under agency from your client. Mm -hmm. You would have to have a conversation with your client saying, listen, this question was asked and now I have to answer them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I have to recuse myself from listing and selling your home mm -hmm. is basically what I'm pretty sure would have to happen. Right. Yeah. Is that what you were thinking? Yes. 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 Okay. That's what I was taught in the stigmatized properties course. Oh, I was just guessing. Just kidding. I take the courses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's common sense too, if you know anything about agency <laughs> though. <laughs> okay. So I was going to say um, something as well. So we talked about the duties of the listing realtor really quickly there for what they have to disclose and who they owe agency to. If you're the buyer's agent though, do you have any tips, I guess, Jenny, for, for buyer's agents in terms of how they can protect their client's interests from, I guess, it, I mean, how are they even supposed to define a stigmatized property, right? But how can they help their clients to make that decision? I think having that conversation, even though it is a, not a very typical question to ask, mm -hmm. is, is do ask that question, are you bothered by this? What are some of the things that are going to prevent you from what are their deal breakers? Yeah, or certain belief systems and values that would prevent you right. from purchasing something. Yeah, that's a great question. What okay. are, I think so too. Beliefs? Yeah, I and should do that. I don't ask that question, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but again, I don't really take a lot, a lot of buyers out anymore. Mm -hmm. But that is a very good question that I feel like our, our listeners should Valuable. incorporate into the communication. Um, another, another step that I would recommend mm -hmm. is I always encourage my buyers, um, irregardless of this topic is to knock or the neighbors when, yeah just mm -hmm. like bumping into neighbors and asking them hey how do you like this how do you like this area what's the strata like um, what um, what do you find that's great about this area mm -hmm. and neighborhood and also the other opposite side is what are some of the issues that the strata has um, what is the what have you heard of anything happening with this house so that way they're getting it mm -hmm. from somebody that's experienced it that's, firsthand that maybe has witnessed something that's yeah. happened in the house that maybe the agents are not aware of a hundred percent the neighbors know everything i mean <laughs> especially now because most people are home more frequently because of covid mm -hmm. but you'll yeah. know so yeah that's that's what i would recommend those are great tips so um just to summarize then so you had said um for if you're a buyer's agent to maybe ask that question are there any belief systems or values mm -hmm. that you hold specifically that would prevent you from purchasing a property or that would make you uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, to move forward to move forward property. with the purchase mm -hmm. um, encouraging your clients to speak with the neighbors or people that are already living in the development as they mm -hmm. might have other information that's not contained in the actual written documents mm -hmm. it's kind of like an off the record but a great inside look at what might be happening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I had one other one as well but it is related um, which is just it's related know your client ask certain questions and if there's anything that in that has come up in the conversations where you think it might pose a problem to your client, mm -hmm. then obviously make further inquiries about that. And then, of course, as always, once you know anything, always disclose, dis disclose, disclose, so mm -hmm. that they can make the decision for themselves. Yeah, right. Um, so I think that about summarizes it for stigmatized properties. Is there anything that you can think of that you'd want to add? I do want to recommend one website, oh, which yeah. I've bookmarked myself. Okay. And it's not the most, like I wouldn't rely on this website just because um, it is up to a person to report it on the website right. and then it gets posted. So it's a website that was launched about seven years ago by two Canadian brothers called housecreep.com. Uh, on the website, there's actually, um, so you punch in the address and sometimes they'll 
There will be reported st stigmatized properties, former drug labs, um, any paranormal activities that's actually occurred on the property. Really? I've and never so, been on that. Yeah, housegroup.com. Okay. So go and bookmark that. It is not, it may not be up to date, obviously, because not a lot of people know about it. Mm -hmm. And the only way that this website is accurate is if agents or people just randomly report it mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. You can also, if the information is also incorrect, you can also reach out to the website developers and have it removed on there. Mm -hmm. So you do have to consider that as well. Yeah, no, that's a great tip. I'm glad that you brought it up. I'm, I'm gonna check it out after for sure. Also, one thing is about drug labs. Oh, tell me. So, <laughs> so what um, do you find that if there's somebody growing a few pots of marijuana, mm. um, have you come across any clients that, that are your buyers or your sellers that are involved in that? So the legalization of cannabis mm -hmm. is what you're talking um, obviously complicates a little bit some of the some of the real estate really right because there's legalization it's a legal thing but what about the structure of a home mm -hmm. um, and actually I think it was there was a topic in this everyone that was recently released in the most recent council minutes and your question is do my clients have the clients have that have a problem yourself? with it yeah um, and it's been grown in the house or outside in the house in the house I have not yet but i would say that i think it's really only an issue for the homes that have a lot of marijuana in it like in terms of the growth because of the potential mold aspects if it was one or two potted plants i don't does it actually create mold if it's if it's in its own little environment you're asking the wrong person. so i don't know the answer to that yeah i would i'd have to look into it um, but I wouldn't advise them to do anything until we actually looked into it and obviously... Yeah, I mean, if there's no wiring or plumbing that's been it should retrofitted, be fine. Yeah. then... So the, if it was no me... If you, the structure the but building. that's what I'm saying. So I, don't, I can't answer for a buyer. If it was me, would it bother me? No, if there were two potted plants because it's not... I don't think it would affect the structure mm -hmm. of a home. Mm -hmm. I know of, of, of homes that have started growing a couple plants because you're allowed to mm -hmm. outside which obviously wouldn't make a difference for me um, as well. But some of our older clients do have a problem with that. They would have to rip the plants out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that sums up our episode today on stigmatized properties. And obviously stigmatized properties can be challenging um, points of sale because every person's individual belief systems are different and their comfort levels are different. So what may be important to me might not be important to Jenny mm -hmm. and vice versa. And so the only advice that I think we can give you is as a licensee, if you are in these situations, remember who you work for and probably I would advise you to seek, uh, seek advice from your managing broker mm -hmm. or independent legal advice, obviously. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there, there's uh, resources out there available to you. So you tell me about <laughs> this haunted story that, um, that is well, I'm kind of freaking out right now. It's not scary, but you did ask me if I believe in spirits and I, I said no kind of, right? I was like, not really. Um, but there was a situation actually I'm reminded of that happened and it was creepy. It was creepy. So I was door knocking for a client in Point Grey and they were interested in um, a few homes on certain streets. So I was knocking on the doors uh, to see if anyone was willing to sell mm -hmm. to my clients. And I remember there was this one property on the corner. I won't say which one. There was this property on the corner. It had been listed six months prior. Okay, it looked, I actually had been inside of the house. Okay. It looked nice, um, but it had sold since. And I door knocked them anyhow. I thought maybe they want to sell. So anyhow, I walk up to the property. It just looked like nobody lived there. And I thought maybe they were just an out of town buyer, not a big deal. But then I knocked on the neighbor's door and I had asked about the property next door. I said, did the, the buyers ever move in? Are they, you know, where are they? What's, what's happening with the property? They said, oh, you should come to the back of our house. And I said, oh, okay, sure. And they said, we'll fill you in on the story. So I said, okay, sure. So I'm walking in between these two tall character homes. And while I'm walking along the side, the house that I had door knocked, that sold six months prior, mm -hmm. I had shivers go up my spine. I looked to the left inside one of the windows because you could see inside of the okay. basement and it was such a weird thing. I got shivers again right now as I'm telling this story. I felt very uncomfortable. It was like a cold, damp feeling. Mm -hmm. 
I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. Why did I just get those shivers? And I feel really uncomfortable, like something feels unsafe. Okay. So I go to talk to the <laughs> next door neighbor and they said, yeah, that house sold around six months ago. And there were two students that committed suicide on different occasions in the basement. Oh, and I just got shivers right now. Yeah. And so, I, I, but it's interesting for this topic because when I walked through the property with my clients, it's not a requirement of the listing realtor to disclose that there were suicides in the basement. Mm -hmm. However, knowing that, and no, also yeah, knowing how I felt, but I didn't know that when I walked past the home, right. it was very uncomfortable. It just right. felt like something was wrong. Uh, so there you go. I mean, maybe there is a case for haunted homes in Vancouver. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that was uh, just the story I was going to share. Make sure that address awesome. is on housecreep.com. You know what? I do have the address. <laughs> I do have the address. You and report it. I sh I'm going to look actually to see if it's on there. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, to rate us, and to share this uh, podcast with your friends and other agents in the office. Take care. Bye.